Marcus County reporting 9-11 down here by the Oculus so it's all carted off as I told you it would be plenty of cops there's the monument out there so it's exclusive right now to family and politicians it's a gravesite for family right but there's a moment of silence going on. It's pretty eerie. People are kind of still, you know. It's one angle. I love that angle. So 19 years ago, right? Here we are, again. For the 19th time. Revisiting. I was four blocks away when it fell. The first building fell. And about a half a mile away in my home, when the planes allegedly flew over from the north and crashed into the tower, the first one. And the second one came in from the northwest, according to the official story. So, this is Cortland Street right here. If you were standing here, right, I always, everybody thought that this hotel right here, the Millennial, would get knocked down. It didn't, it survived. You see the Century 21 on the corner over there, it's an old bank, that survived. Co totally covered with rubble. Right. Let's look at the, um, I'll, remember the church? I'll take you to the church. Because there's really nothing going on inside. Like I said, it's a grave site. And you've probably seen the fountains a hundred times. But really, the action was out here. On that day, you know. So, if you recall, right? This was the fence. You remember the fence? With all the... With all the um, where is my loved one, you remember? This is the church, the old Dutch church, right across the street. And all of these, all of the, all of these, uh, this picket fence here was covered with the names of people that were missing. You remember? That people thought that maybe they were buried under the rubble or something. St. Paul's Chapel. Maybe, maybe my my brother or my son that went down on that day is buried under the rubble and is still alive. And will you please help us to try to find it? Find them. Well, maybe they're just wandering around Manhattan lost. And they don't know where they are because it's so confusing. Remember those stories? Thousands of flyers of people's looking for their loved ones on the fence. You couldn't get your hand around the fact that that they had died, you know, that they were dead, that they were perished, that it is impossible that in Manhattan people would be roaming around the streets not knowing, not knowing where they were. Uh, it's impossible, but people still believed it. They wanted to believe so so much that maybe, just maybe, their loved one was in a, you know, was was trapped under the rubble, you know, or wandering the streets aimlessly. So it's an emotional, you know, an emotional kind of place, right? My vantage point when it fell down was, if you look through the church, right? I was on the other side of the church filming and that was the second that was the first um, the tower was right there so maybe three blocks away four blocks away I watched it go down you know saw the first didn't see that never saw the plane hit again this is not a day for conspiracy theories because it doesn't matter 
it doesn't matter in the sense that people died. There's always there's always the tragedy of war and the the, the speculation of war. But I feel like that's a sec that's a side product. Right? I think it's something it's a side issue today. The more important issue is that people were this is very real for people. It's not if you if you have any inclination that this didn't happen. Are you wrong? <laughs> That's all. You're very wrong. The seventh tower, the seventh building, did it was a controlled demolition? Yeah, probably, but that's that's a stupid theory. People keep asking me, Conti, why don't you look into the seventh building seven? It was demolition. Yeah, well, so what? It's that's common. The thing was on fire. The building was burning for over twelve hours, and there was nobody in there. And if they were in there, they were incinerated already. So what's the point? So you know, take the tower down. You know, control demolition, knock it down so it doesn't fall over and start a fire somewhere else that's not you know that's whether whether the fire department or whoever wants to admit this things like that is irrelevant it doesn't matter right? even if so what 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 if you found out that that the seventh building was was knocked down what if you found out today that the seventh building was a controlled demolition would it really matter what if you, I mean, Dick Cheney already admitted that the plane over Philadelphia flying in Philadelphia heading for the White House was shot down. So why is it a surprise that the rest of it could be fake? What difference does it make? Everything changed on that day in the United States. Our sense of, our sense of security, our sense of stability, our sense of uh, uh, safety. It's a big day. It was a big event. You can see over here too. I'm going to head over to Zuccotti Park. The, uh, the, um, the real reason why this is all happening. That real reason. So again, you got more, you know, some important people coming in. I guess if you work here, how's the city worker? I could, I could get in there if I, if I wanted to. <laughs> I could pull that one off. It's in my pocket. But uh, it's no sense in going in there. Who cares? I'll go in there maybe later today. But you've seen the fountains and all that and the museum. Inside the museum, there's nothing really going on either. Other than something that they do from about 9 o'clock, they read off the names of the 3,000 victims. One name at a time for hours. They just read off the names. You know, who has those kind of hours? You know what I'm saying? The emotion of the, the, emotion of the event, right? 19 years ago, people this, people that, that were born after the fact that don't even remember it, right? This whole area, this whole neighborhood was totally f obliterated, was totally full of, full of rubble. Thank you. Totally full of rubble. So again, you can see the, the, rather, the rather tense kind of situation over here. It's cut off. It'll, this is the fire department where I was last year. You remember I did the... Uh, I put up that clip recently of the firemen having their, uh, having their ceremony over here. You see also the Muslim... People are often perplexed by a Muslim uh, temple, a mosque, right in the middle of the thing. And... To tell the truth, that's been there the whole time. That is not something that was put in after the fact. That was, that was always their property. The towers were on this, this block, right on this side. And on this side, right here, wasn't the towers at all. It was 
the mosque and, and other things. That's the building in the back over there. That's the American Express building. Uh, but that mosque has been there the whole time. No big deal. Plenty of cops. What time are they going to open it up for the uh, for the three o'clock? No, but for the for the firemen, the uh, ce the ceremony. You can't for the ceremony, the firemen ceremony that they 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 sing and play. I'm not a family member. I I was. So at that corner, Cedar Street, make a right. It's closer. It's closer. Okay. Okay. I got I got you. I was there last year. Thank you. Cops are so uptight. You gotta, you gotta yell them. You gotta shout them down a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to go in there anyway. It's boring. Hey. Right, well, the pushy cops just trying to cross the goddamn street. So after 9-11, what happened? What happened? Remember, you remember Zuccotti Park? Remember Occupy Wall Street? You remember the days of Occupy Wall Street? In 2011, when people held down this park? Right? Brave souls came here and said, the problem is Wall Street. The problem is the money in politics. The problem is, is, is the banking industry. And they held their ground, right? Is it part of 9-11? You bet your ass it is. Saudi money. We're right back where we started. It's coming again. The, the recessions, the, the market bubbles, the crash. Maybe, maybe, maybe another, another, another flag like this one. Knock down some buildings, take everybody's mind off the ball. The giant debt bubble. The debt bubble that's banks right now can can lend money cheaper than they can borrow it. Is that ridiculous? They can lend they can they can they can borrow money cheaper than they can lend it. So they can borrow money at zero and one percent, and they can buy junk bonds, corporate bonds, load up on bonds at at three percent and make two percent on their money that isn't their money. Could you do that? That pretty much explains the debt bubble. I'm walking a tight rope right here, so <laughs> if I fall down, you get to see me break my leg. <laughs> but um, all right, that's what Occupy Wall Street was, Zuccotti Park, full of people, full of patriots, real patriots, people who understood the problem. Not it's Mossad, it's the deep state, it's the fucking Jews. <laughs> All those players are part of it. But the real problem was, and always and still is, the banking industry and income and wealth inequality, where 1% of the population still controls everybody else. And people hate us because of it. Not us, personally, but hate the people running the show because of it. And so is another 9-11 inevitable? Of course it is. Is another market crash inevitable? Of course it is. Because you see, the money won. The patriots are gone in the park. The people who saw the problem, they tried to rise up once again with Bernie Sanders, 2016, 2015, but they were labeled communists and socialists. They were told that, that you're trying to, you take away our American values. You're not American because you're you're not capitalist or something. They rose up and then they were shut down. They were cheated. Right? Cheated in an election. American elections are now rigged because of it. 
corruption is deep on 9-11. Where were you when the buildings fell? Everybody has a story. Everybody was somewhere. Everybody was somewhere. These guys, we knew where they were. They were rushing to the scene to do their job that they had sworn to do, you know? Save people, rescue people. And they ran into a burning building, despite the fact that, that they knew it might have been their last day, you know? What are you selling here? Moses wrote of me. Moses wrote of me? Who's, who's me? You? Personally? Oh, Christ. Gotcha. In the scripture you'll find in Deuteronomy, uh, Moses wrote that uh, he would raise up a prophet among Israel like unto Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses was the most meek man before God of his time. Right. He was also a priest. He was also a ruler. Mm -hmm. And all those things cover Christ. He was exactly that. He's a ruler. He's the high priest. Mm -hmm. And he's the advocate between man and God because he's one third of the Godhead, the mm -hmm. Word of God, was made flesh and right. came into the world. And the blood that He shed, His sacrifice, His own blood and life, is what cleanses us from sin. Mm -hmm. All the other animal sacrifices were only symbolic of that one sacrifice. You say animal sacrifices? Like the Jews were given sacrifices to sacrifice lambs, uh, rams, bullocks, clean animals, split hoof and chew cud. Mm -hmm. It's still going on today, though. People eat animals, you know. Well, eating animals, is, you know, that's that's, that's different. That's the different. That's you know, individual taste. Some people eat animals. Some people eat meat. So it's okay. So it's something. okay to sacrifice an animal, but eating it is. It's okay. It's not okay to sacrifice an animal, but it's okay to eat it. No, it's not. I'm not saying anything like that. I mean, today, the sacrifice is pointless. Did Noah? Did Noah round up the animals and put them on the? No, they came to the, him. They came to him for freedom and to spread their survive that, flood. survive that flood did noah say yeah and when you get there we're going to eat you no. but but they got eaten anyway when it came to the clean animals like the herd animals yeah. cattle goats sheep things like that there was seven of each kind of that whereas the unclean animals like horses so goats, god so god is for man and not for the animals right <laughs> Everything you see, son, was created by God for man. For man. Everything revolves around man. Right. Did man knock down those two buildings that day? Absolutely. Did, it wasn't... That? Well, there's a lot of speculation of who exactly, I've but... I've been in construction for years, son. In 1930s, a World War II a, a, a bomber, a light, a medium bomber, ran into the, world, into the uh, Empire State Building. It's still standing. Yeah. They build those buildings to take that kind of impact. Right. There were thousands of cameras on those buildings. So you don't think pla you don't think planes hit it? Oh, I know planes hit it. But look Do at you the see plane. them? Do you have any evidence that it any planes hit? It's all over the internet. Real, uh, undoctored uh, videos of people that were just tourists. You know, I, I lived here for um, I lived up the block uh, for most of my life yeah. in New York City, and that day when the planes hit. I was about, I was about a qu half a mile away, and when the plane, when the when the building fell, I was about a qu I was about a quarter of a mile away, not even four blocks away. I saw the whole thing, and all in my in my travels and in all the time that I was here and you know living here, never once did I meet somebody that says said they saw the planes hit the building. Never, That's I never met anybody. There were a lot what do you say to that? There's a lot of people that saw them, but you got to stop and think. How many people are in? But the I was city? here and I didn't yeah, see them. How many people are in the city? I can't even. See Millions. The tower. Yeah, but I live in the city. That's yeah, my point. Listen, After listen the. To me. God. I can't even see that building right now. Right. Two airplanes could crash into the existing building right now, and I yeah. would never see it. You think if a 747 yeah. flew uh, in from the north, that nobody would have seen it or heard it traveling that low? 
Every, a lot of people did see it. There's thousands of videos yeah. that are actual. You don't think they're holograms? They're not rigged, fake? No. Okay. Fair enough. There's I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not so sure myself. That's why I'm asking. I like I said. I've been and you're you're here. You're here promoting. Let's get back to you. You're here promoting salvation. Salvation. What about? What do you say to the other religions? What do you say to the uh, the Muslims? What do you say to the Jews? What do you say to the the Buddhists who think these are all crazy? Christ has come. The Messiah has come. Uh, Islam says that it believes the uh, law of Moses. Right. That they don't do the law of Moses. Uh, the Jews, the Jews have been renowned, and I'm Jewish, by the way. The, uh, the Jews have been. Well, you're renowned. promoting Christ. You're Jewish and promoting yes, Christ. That's right. It's that's Christ. a contradiction. But no? Je- no, it's not. Jesus okay. Christ is. His name is Yeshua Hamashiach. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeshua He's Hamashiach. A Jew. He's a Jew. All of the apostles were Jews. The only one that wrote anything in the New Testament that wasn't a Jew was Luke. Luke was a Greek. You don't think, what do you, what do you say to the story that Jesus was a, uh, he was kind of like a runaway, he went to India, he studied yeah, Buddhism, he was a, he was a, he was a guru. Uh, <laughs> and he tells, him, tells him exactly where he's at. When he was a young child, about two years old, he was born in Bethlehem, he was a young child, two years old, that's when a large number, a big caravan came from the east with a number of very wealthy people, mostly kings, I believe, and they, uh, they came to Jerusalem. That's yeah. why it says in the scriptures that Herod and all of Jerusalem was, what is this? Right, right. Nobody's going to get excited over three guys on camels. <laughs> so this huge caravan came. And they asked Herod, where is the Messiah born? Well, he demanded of the, of the priest and the uh, scholars, where is this Messiah supposed to be born? And he said, Bethlehem of Judea. It's written in the prophets, thou Bethlehem of Judea, though they are the least. So you think he? So you think he lived his life in Bethlehem? He, no, no, he was two years old in Bethlehem when that happened. Right, but he lived. But he he was, lived in Israel, and he he then became. Well, actually, he lived. He was the son of God. He was born immaculately, and then he was he was locked in. He was crucified and locked in the tomb and rose from the dead. You believe that whole story, right? Well, yeah. That's that's the faith right. that salvation is. So faith, faith is beyond evidence, faith, or faith is the evidence of things not seen. Okay. Hope is for the things that you don't have. But isn't that an oxymoron? How could you have faith in things unseen? How could you call <laughs> how could you call things unseen evidence? Have you ever been to uh, Have you ever been to that country between China and Russia? Uh, between China and Russia, uh, I don't know which one you're talking about. Have you ever been there? Been where? To Bet- the, to the little, there's a country that's. Uh, between China and Russia. Yeah, right there between the between the two countries, there's a there's a landlocked nation there. What's the name of it? I I, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it's there. All right. Okay. Yeah. But how do I know it's there? Because it's on the maps. Because somebody right. said it was there. Okay. Okay. So if what if you're gospel, wrong? What if there is no God? What if it's well, what if it's Bible all says, just a hologram? The Bible says that if if Christ died in vain. If none of this is real, then we, Christians, true Christians, are the most miserable of men. If, we, if only in this life we have hope, the Bible says. But yeah. the things that have happened to me, you know, I've had two broken bones in my body. I didn't make it to the hospital with either one of them. Right. Okay. They were healed before I got to the hospital. Okay. Wow. Uh, I got shot at. That was a miracle? Yeah. Wow. I got shot at. In my early years as a young Christian, I got shot at by somebody. Just before the trigger my man friend, pulled the trigger, my I got pushed out of the way. My friend was on the, the 106th floor, that, that, that second building that got hit. Yeah. And he heard the announcement. He says, get out of the building. Oh, he says, go back to your seat. Don't worry about it. They're looking out of, out of one building and seeing the other building on fire. Yeah. And his, 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 the voice of God told him, get out of the building. And he did. And when he hit the ground, the second plane hit, blew up, or some explosion over his head, and he was home with, it, you know, watching it on TV like everybody else. So that's a miracle. Well, see, I know a woman that had a, uh, know a woman that had a, uh, a uh, thing there, a, uh, a hair salon. Yeah. Because she's a born again Christian. Yeah. At four o'clock, she was woke up by the Lord, and the Lord told her, "Do not go into work today. Call your people. Tell them not to come in." She would have been killed along with all of her employees. And, Right. And they meant it. Sure. Okay, they yeah. were up, apparently they were up in the higher floors. Yeah. 
So, but the, the purpose of, of all this, when, when this is all said and done, when, when our time comes, mm -hmm. what do you have if you don't have Christ, which is the eternal life? Eternal life is in chapter 17 of the book of John, in the third verse is the perfect definition of what eternal life is. It's knowing the Father and His Son that He sent, Christ Jesus. Okay? Like I said, His name in Hebrew is Yeshua. Yeshua is also the name of the man that, that brought uh, Israel into the Promised Land after Moses. Right. Okay? The name means God is salvation. God made two very fine women right behind you, too. Well, I'm not interested <laughs> in, in secular or whatever. That's the uh, power of the Holy Spirit right. to avoid such things. Yeah. What's up, boss? You're on the wrong side of the camera. Now you're on the right side. Hey, good talking to you, man. Uh, That's uh, Marcus Conti. I do a YouTube a YouTube blog. Very nice to meet you. I already have one. You gave it to me. I put it in my pocket. Good talking to you, mate. You too, man. Wow, a little, it's like going to church for the... <laughs> Just visited the church. The church of God. Everybody tries to, you know, find a way to connect, right? Try to try to find a way to feel right, on this crazy day, right? People preaching God, find God. I wanted to ask him, are you happier? Is it better to live, live vigorously now or spend all your days waiting for tomorrow? When when we live in, when we move to paradise. My grandmother used to say that you, when people would say, you're going to go to hell. <laughs> and my grandmother would say, go to hell. This is hell. We're in hell. All right. If everybody's trying to get out to go to some other place, then we must be in hell. It must be hell. Uh... See if we find anybody else to talk to. That's an interesting guy, right? Try to be respectful when he's talking about God. Do I believe any of it? No. There's some truths to it. He seems happy. He seems content. A Christian Jew. <laughs> to each his own, man. That's the way it is, right? That's how I see it. To each his own. That building is like, that's the most expensive piece of property in the whole thing, right? I, I think that the Oculus costs more to build than the Freedom Tower. You correct me if I'm wrong, but so I don't have my Google in front of me. I guess it's supposed to be an eagle. I'm not really sure. I never made any sense of what the hell it is. And the big, beautiful Freedom Tower right behind it. Big beautiful building. They knocked out our two front teeth, the twin towers, and we built them. The, we built them a big middle finger right back. <laughs> a big middle finger. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You wanna mess with us? You wanna mess with us? Marcus Conti reporting. 